Welcome to a proof of the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem states that if f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists at least one number, x equals c, in the open interval from a to b such that f prime of c equals the quantity f of b minus f of a divided by the quantity b minus a. To better understand what this is telling us, let's look at the graph below. If we consider these two functions on the closed interval from A to B, notice how the left end point, this point here, would be the ordered pair A comma F of A, and the right end point would be this point here, which would be the ordered pair B comma F of B. And therefore, this quotient here would be the slope of this secant line. Again, this quotient here is just the slope formula, y sub two minus y sub one divided by x sub two minus x sub one using function notation. So the mean value theorem tells us there's some x value equal to c in the open interval from a to b where the slope of the tangent line given by f prime of c would be the same as the slope of the secant line passing through the two endpoints of the closed interval. So if we look at the graph of the red function shown here, notice that this x value of c, the slope of this tangent line, which would be f prime of c, is the same as the slope of the secant line. Now looking at the blue function, notice that this x value of c, the blue function has a tangent line with a slope of f prime of c, which again is the same as the slope of the secant line. And now let's prove the mean value theorem. To begin our proof, we'll let g of x be the secant line to f of x, passing through the two endpoints in the closed interval from a to b. So the two endpoints would be a comma f of a and b comma f of b. So g of x is this secant line here. And now we'll find the equation for g of x in point slope form, which is the form y minus y sub one equals m times the quantity x minus x sub one. And for our equation, we'll use this point here. So using function notation, y minus y sub one would be g of x minus f of a equals, we already discussed this is going to be the slope of the secant line, and then we have times the quantity x minus a for x minus x sub one. Next, we'll go ahead and solve this for g of x by adding f of a to both sides of the equation, which we have here. Next, we'll introduce a new function, h of x, where the output is going to be the vertical distance between f of x and g of x. And notice how h of x is pictured here. Also notice how f of a would be zero because the vertical distance between f of x and g of x would be zero at this end point. And h of b would also be zero because the distance between the two functions is also zero here. So again, we're gonna let h of x be equal to f of x minus g of x. And now we're going to perform a substitution for g of x, since we know g of x is equal to the slope of the secant line times the quantity x minus a plus f of a. So we'll perform this substitution here on the next slide. So after we perform this substitution, we have this equation for h of x. And again, notice that h of a equals h of b, which both equals zero, because at x equals a and x equals b, the vertical distance between f of x and g of x is zero. And since h of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, Rolle's theorem applies and therefore there is some x value c in the open interval such that f prime of c is equal to zero. So for the next step, we want to take this equation here and differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of h of x is h prime of x. This is gonna be equal to the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. And now to find the derivative of this part here, we need to be careful. Notice how this quotient is a constant. So if we distribute, we'd have this constant times x. And since the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to one, the derivative of this first product would just be this quotient here. The next product would be a constant the derivative of a constant is zero, and f of a is also a constant, so the derivative would be zero. So the derivative of all this stuff in the parentheses is just 
the slope of the secant line, or the quantity f of b minus f of a, divided by the quantity b minus a. So now we have h prime of x equals f prime of x minus this quotient here. So now from Rolle's theorem, we know there's some value c in the open interval from a to b, where h prime of c equals zero, and therefore h prime of c would have to be equal to f prime of c minus this quotient here, which would equal zero, again, for some value of c. And now we have our proof. We just need to add this quotient here to both sides of the equation. So it follows, for some value of c in the open interval, f prime of c is equal to the quantity f of b minus f of a divided by the quantity b minus a. And this proves the mean value theorem. Before we go, though, there are a couple things that we should recognize. The mean value theorem tells us at least one number c exists, however, it does not tell us how many values of c exist or how to find them. So when we use the mean value theorem, we first want to verify the mean value theorem applies, and then to find the values of c, we set f prime of x equal to the slope of the secant line and solve for x. I hope you found this helpful.